Hey everyone, it's Bob Crossan, Senior Managing Editor for Water and Waste Digest. I am here today with Bill Moore. He is the CEO and founder of Zona. And we're going to talk about the impact the pandemic has had on operational technologies, vulnerabilities this creates for utilities, and how we can possibly address them. <laughs> So, Bill, thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate your time. Well, thank you very much, Bob. I appreciate you having us on. Yeah, so we actually published an article from you on uh, on this particular topic on our website, which we'll link in the description for everybody. But um, could you talk a little bit, let's talk. start with kind of like the, the broader aspect here of the pandemic and the impact it has had on operational technologies. My understanding is lots more remote work stuff and remote monitoring. Yeah, no, no, Bob. Yeah, I think, you know, even before the pandemic, uh, you know, the, the OT technologies have been moving more into connected assets, right? Industrial Internet of Things, sensors and so forth and automation. So I think what's happened with the pandemic is it's really is pushed industrial enterprises and like water and wastewater uh, utilities and so forth to operate remotely. Right. Meaning in many cases, what's happened is this, the enterprise IT network is had to kind of extend their network access to OT assets. And, and many times that's been done haphazardly uh, leading to vulnerabilities. Yeah. So th yeah, speaking of those vulnerabilities, what, what kind of impact has this had on security vulnerabilities, especially for water and wastewater utilities um, with more remote access? Oftentimes you're talking about more internet connectivity and cloud-based usage and stuff like that. And those could potentially pose some vulnerabilities for utilities. Sure. Yeah, I, I think the the hack last year on the Oldsmar uh, water treatment plant was a wake up call. Uh, you know, that's a, a situation where the remote access was insecurely set up. You know, which led to a hacker gaining temporary control over critical systems and obviously uh, putting potentially 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 putting thousands of lives at risk, right, in the poisoning of, of the water. Mm -hmm. and thankfully, that was caught in time before anything was uh, that that bad. But uh, I think. You know, one of the things that we see is that a lot of these water plants, especially municipalities, they just don't have the cyber uh, security resources or budgets to really effectively secure their OT networks. Mm -hmm. So they're looking for a, a simpler approach uh, to do that. Yeah. Well, and not to mention, some of these systems are very small and might have one guy or one gal doing everything. <laughs> so, you know, yes. they, of course, they're strapped. They're strapped on time and personnel. Yeah, we, we, when we talk to a lot of these folks, you know, they, what they ask is like, we don't have any IT or cybersecurity resources. We have about 15 minutes a month every Saturday to get on to do IT stuff because, you know, they're bu bu busy running a power, you know, water treatment facility, right? They don't want to be dealing with IT administrative issues and things like that or, or cybersecurity issues, which are even, you know, more complex, so. Oh, yeah, for sure. Well, and, and all the more important to have some simple things that people can do. You talked about in this article three of the steps that people can take to help so start to secure some of those vulnerabilities. Could you talk about what those three uh, steps are and how the, how people can maybe fit them into their workflow? Sure. So I think, um, you know, from a, a security perspective, uh, you know, utilities really need to implement a zero trust model, okay, when implementing uh remote access controls to these OT assets. So I think the, st the three steps really, number one is, is implementing multi-factor authentication. So that's so important and it's actually very simple to do, you know, either with hardware tokens or, or um, using, you know, tokens that you can get through SMS, but, but, but with hardware tokens, it makes it even more secure because it's something you actually have physically in your hand. The second part of this is really um, reducing that attack surface so this means using granular authorization to those OT assets and really ensuring that the data protocols stay on that OT network and they don't get exposed out to the internet. So that's a key part of that. Um, RDP is a, is a big protocol that's used throughout IT and OT networks and making sure that the protocol that's used to connect to a critical asset uh, using something like RDP is not exposed to the, to the internet. You know, that's the number one attack vector for ransomware is a compromise of that protocol. And so that's a huge one. And then the third part of this, I think is really implementing full user session logging and reporting, right? So you wanna be able to go out, go back in time sometimes and see who and when and how users were accessing the systems. And uh, that, that can you know, not only provide more cybersecurity, but also um, more operational efficiencies and, and, and helping even with training 
and so mm-hmm. forth for, for people, junior technicians and so forth. So. Yeah. Two things I wanted to touch on there. So you talked about hardware tokens and those are those can be really useful not only for oh, hey, th- you need this to gain access to this particular like computer or whatever, but it's also access to buildings, access to your plant site, <laughs> you know, like yes. you can use that across everything, not just for cybersecurity, you can use it for the actual physical elements of the plant as well. Um and then two was a does RDP stand for anything in particular for those who may not be in the know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Remote desktop protocol. So Got it's, it. a, it's a protocol that's used to, you know, for remote acts. A lot of, a lot of companies uh, utilize it. And unfortunately they, they utilize it in, in, in insecure ways, many cases, which, which lead to the problems. So. Yeah. yeah. Which I believe if I'm not, if I'm not, um, mistaken, I believe that's part of the issue with the Oldsmar was using a remote desktop protocols like yes. application basically, but it wasn't secured enough to, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. And I, and I think that goes to the budgetary aspects of things too, because, you know, maybe the way that was implemented on the IT network and I, I'm not, I don't know this, but, you know, they could have been done securely, but, you know, maybe they just took the core part of that without all the other security infrastructure and the cybersecurity people <laughs> around them yeah. to make sure it was implemented correctly. So it's not just the, the the technology, but it's the way it's integrated and implemented with other security technologies uh, mm-hmm. to make sure it's secure, right? And as opposed to, uh, you know, pointing out one technology, you know, a lot of it is the way it's implemented too, so. Yeah, yeah, I mean, to, to your point, the the weakest link in the chain is where the chain's going to break. So you right. got to make sure that all the links are strong. <laughs> yeah. Right. And you just, yeah, right. Exactly. And you, you don't want to put up the fence with just weak, just the weak links and like, forget about all this, all yeah. the strong links, you know, so you're, you're going to be in trouble. In a, in a, For sure. Yeah. So, I mean, we, we've, we've kind of been discussing this a little bit already, but maybe a little more directly, could you talk about what people should, what utilities should consider when uh, evaluating remote technologies, such as advanced metering infrastructure, remote monitoring systems, cloud-based SCADA, um, stuff like that as well? Yeah, so a lot of these systems, again, I think, um, you know, what we're seeing with Industrial Internet of Things is a lot of these meters, and, 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 and they're really helpful for getting analytics and how are things operating and integration with billing systems. So in the, in the instance of the colonial pipeline hack, you know, there's advanced meters that were able to update the billing system in real time. Well, you know, you got to look holistically at the network and make sure that you're all of your critical systems, sometimes they're IT systems, but the access to that may maybe needs a different authentication authorization layer following a zero trust model, right? Because we saw what happened on the East Coast after... Uh, you know, and that wasn't an OT specific hack, but these interdependencies between critical IT and OT systems have to be evaluated. Uh, so all of these remote, op- you know, remote operations type solutions um, have to, you have to employ a, a much more secure architecture uh, for those. So, uh, w- and, and, and really the analysis with understanding how all of these interdependencies and how all these are interconnected is, is paramount, right? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. like we were talking about the 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 chain link fence, right? <laughs> like you got to look at all the different aspects. Cer- certainly, this maybe a piece of technology is going to help you a lot with your operations, but yeah. making sure that when it is integrated, it fits within that grander security vision that you have for your system is going to be a critical part of it. Yep, absolutely. So, uh, last question here is kind of more forward looking. What what do you see as being the future of oper- utility operations? You know, like we've got all this remote stuff. Where do you how how far does this go? <laughs> uh, yeah. So it's interesting because I think there's there's beginning to be a cultural shift. Uh, obviously, the pandemic has kind of accelerated this and mm-hmm. the need for remote operations. Uh, but there is, you know, there's an aging workforce, you know, of plant managers and, and uh, you know, these are highly qualified engineers, you know, controls and automation engineers. And, and it's, it's tough to fill these positions. You combine that with the lack of cybersecurity resources and you're, you know, you have an issue now that you have to figure out ways of, you know, not only automating a lot of these processes through, you know, AI and ML, which is, you know, big buzzwords today, but how do you, how do you make this a very secure Zero, you know, u- utilizing a zero trust model for remote operations and maybe mobile operations, so that you can deal with, uh, you know, maybe a scarcity of resources, but still be able to get the jobs done and make sure everybody, you know, people, are, the public is safe as well. So, yeah. 
Well, awesome. Thank you so much, Bill. I really appreciate your time and talking to us today. And like I said, at the top of the of this interview, we do have an article from you on our website. So everyone should check that out. It's in the video description below. And um, any other resources that Bill has for us, we'll have those included down there too. So Bill, thank you so much. We really appreciate your time. Thanks very much, Bob. I really appreciate you having us. Thank you.